Dr. Pachari, thank you for meeting NATO Review. First of all, congratulations on winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Thank you. Could you tell me what that means for you personally and in terms of the message it sends out? Well, to me personally, of course, it's a source of pride. One feels very good, but uh, of course, uh, the award is meant for the entire IPCC community and the governments who take decisions for the IPCC. So it's, it's a unique sense of pleasure that you see uh, such a large-scale effort being uh, recognized. I think it also sends out a very important message that um, climate change has very important relationships with uh, various elements of peace and uh, that we need to start focusing on this issue. Uh, I think the nexus between what climate change can do in terms of impacts and uh, peace and stability and security across the globe uh, is something that needs to be highlighted now on the basis of the message that you get from this award. Do you think that the possible effects of future climate change, such as the increased competition for resources, land, and even water, means that the definition of security needs to be redefined. I think so, because, you know, security is not uh, sending in troops to some place or the other. I think, firstly, we have to be intellectually much more rigorous in understanding the drivers of security or the threats to security. And that certainly is an ongoing effort that has to be mounted on a large scale. Uh, secondly, I think we also need to understand that, um, you know, when you're talking about climate change, there's a whole range of other development issues that need to be kept in mind. There's the issue of equ equity. Therefore, there is a certain ethical dimension in this whole thing. Uh, the whole issue of consumption of depleting natural resources. Uh, we're certainly going to find much more intense competition for remaining resources such as uh, hydrocarbons, for instance. The fact that Russia planted a flag under the North Pole is on only symbolic of this enormous uh, competition to get there first. And that certainly could be a threat to security uh, in some form or the other. And this, in a way, will also distort politics across the globe. You'll find that those agents and those organizations that are able to help countries and societies in uh, providing access to resources will be favored, will be supportive, even if they're repressive regimes, uh, even if uh, they violate the very basic principles on which democracy and all the freedoms that uh, we value are, are based on. So, you know, I think uh, there's a new set of issues that need to be carefully highlighted and understood if we are talking about security. Environmental issues are global, but certain poorer regions will suffer more than most. Do you think this division of the world will increase or decrease the importance of borders? Well, it's, very, uh, it's a very complex question. On the one hand, they'd become less important because after all, nature or changes in climate and patterns of wind and weather don't respect uh, territorial boundaries. But on the other hand, given the threats that would arise as a result perhaps of displacement of populations, uh, natural calamities, you would find much greater effort being put into protecting borders simply because you, most society would, would view people across the border as a potential threat. And therefore, you know, it's a very peculiar situation that we're confronting. On the one hand, the factors that are going to lead to a threat to security and stability uh, don't respect borders at all. On the other hand, I think the response to this might actually mean defining those borders in a much more rigid uh, sense and perhaps protecting them with uh, much more, let's say, proactive efforts. And in terms of defining the borders, uh, you've already mentioned Russia planting a flag on the seabed of the, uh, the North Pole. Uh, do you think that border definition, uh, as well as protection, border definition will become a major issue? 
I think our laws and agreements clearly define borders uh, and there really shouldn't be too much uh, scope for doubt on that. But the interpretation of these agreements will of course be subject to a lot of controversy and there would be those who would like to use those definitions in their favor versus others. So I think uh, this clearly, the fact that um, resources and threats to um, security and peace as a result of climate change are going to go beyond borders would require or at least impel several governments and societies to define those borders in a manner that gives them an advantage over others. So you'll probably see uh, many more disputes coming up and uh, therefore a fair amount of uh, uh, danger I would say to, uh, to, to security in some of these areas where borders could be somewhat nebulous uh, in people's understanding even though the agreements are fairly clear. At present do you feel that policy makers in government or the population of those countries are more radical in their approach towards addressing climate change? Well, I think by and large in the past, as one would have expected, uh, governments only deal with issues that they think will be of importance in the next election. And uh, therefore, their time horizons in defining problems and priorities have been dictated purely by this consideration. But you find that with greater awareness on what's going to happen in the future, populations in various countries and communities and societies at large are getting very concerned about some of these issues. Now, if they start bringing the long-term implications of today's policies and actions into the political agenda 